In an earlier video that I posted back in 2015, I demonstrated how to make color prints on an inkjet printer that matched what you see on your computer monitor. Um, I did that demonstration using an Epson printer and showing how to do this with Adobe Photoshop. Um, the earlier method that I showed how to do involved using ICC profiles and color management, where you would have a profile for the paper you're using. The, a profile is made for the combination of the paper, the printer, and the type of ink you're using. So the Epson printer that I've got is an Epson P800, and if I was going to print on, say, uh, Ilford Smooth Gloss, which is one of my favorite papers, I would need a profile that's made for Ilford Smooth Gloss with the Epson P800 printer and the Epson, um, the Epson ink set that comes with it, because I'm using Epson's ink rather than a third-party ink set. And that's rather complex because um, you have to choose the correct profile, and then you have to choose the rendering intent, and you have to choose then you have to soft proof the image, which soft proofing is a, me is a method of simulating on the screen how the print will look when it comes out of your printer, because typically the prints that come out on paper will be a little bit darker than what you see on screen, and the reason for that is that something which is self-illuminated like a computer screen, colors and such are going to look brighter and more vivid than they, than they ever will on a piece of paper that you view by reflected light. And the problem with that is that soft proofing is really not all that exact. In theory, it sounds really nice, but it doesn't really look exactly like what you are going to get on your paper. And so you still have, there's still a bit of trial and error and a little bit of uh, getting used to what they're going to look like compared to what the screen does. And so what I'm going to show you today is a much simpler and less technically involved method that gives prints that come out of the printer that match very, very closely to the monitor without soft proofing and without messing around with profiles. And this is called printer color management. And when you try to print a picture in Photoshop, and we're going to use this here as our experimental test one, when you go to print, you're going to see color management choices here. And where it says color handling, you're going to have a couple choices. You can either do Photoshop manages colors, and this is what you're going to do if you're going to do using the ICC profiles and the soft proofing and such that I showed in my earlier video. Or you can choose printer manages colors. And this is what we're going to do for this um, for this lesson. Now when you choose printer manages colors, this other stuff down here about um, rendering intent, you can ignore that. It doesn't matter what this is set at. The Epson driver ignores this stuff so it doesn't matter. Now. Now that you've chosen printer manages colors, you need to tell the printer driver what kind of paper you're using. And we do that in the print settings up here. And if you have more than one printer installed in your system, then you need to choose the printer from this pull-down menu here. Um, you can see I've got an earlier Epson Stylus Photo R2400, and then I have my P800, which is what I'm using now. So we choose the correct printer, and then choose print settings. In the print settings box, um, and this is, I'm doing this on a Macintosh, but this works the same on Windows. It's just the, the actual layout of where the, where the settings are at is a little bit different on the Windows version of the driver, but the settings you're going to use are going to be exactly the same. Um, of course, you want to choose the size paper you're using and then go down to color matching. And actually, the Windows version is a little bit simpler because most of the stuff is on a single screen without having to go to all these different screens to choose this stuff. But here where it says color matching, you're going to have two choices. If you're on a Mac, your choices are going to be color sync or Epson color controls. If you're on Windows, it's going to be a choice of ICM, which is Windows version of color sync, or the Epson color controls. So choose Epson color controls, and then we'll go down to printer settings and the printer settings are going to have a basic and an advanced um, set of settings. Let's start with the basic ones. Need to choose a media type. Um, we're going to do premium glossy photo paper for this one. And if you're using a paper that's made by Epson then of course you would choose the Epson paper that you're using, whatever paper that happens to be. If you're using a non-Epson paper, I found that this actually does work with a lot of non-Epson papers. Um, I use a lot of the Ilford papers. The Ilford Smooth Gloss is really good, and the, Yel the Ilford, uh, Ilford Gold Fiber Silk is another favorite. 
And what I do with those is I simply choose the media type that Ilford recommends that you choose because Ilford's instructions for their papers tell you which Epson media type to choose when you print on an Epson printer. Um, and this is true for other paper manufacturers too, not just Ilford. If you're using Hanna Mule or using Canson or whatever other manufacturer of paper that you're using, they're going to give you instructions for an Epson printer telling you which Epson paper type to choose for their paper. So just choose whatever it is that the instructions for your paper tell you to use. Um, the premium photo glossy paper in the Epson driver works also very well for the Ilford Smooth Gloss. And on this printer, I think that it's also the setting you use for the gold fiber silk. I know on my older R2400 for gold fiber silk, I had to use um, the premium semi-gloss setting. So you need to check and make sure that you have the right setting for your printer and the paper type you're using. So once you choose the media type, then you go down. Print mode is going to be Epson Precision Dot, which is the um, for color printing. If you're doing black and white, you do advanced black and white photo, but that's something that's totally different than what we're doing here. The setup for that is a lot different, and I have a separate video online that you can watch on using the advanced black and white mode, which is really a great way to do black and white printing. But since we're doing color here, we're going to choose the Epson Precision Dot. Now, color mode. You're going to have two, you're going to have um, you're either off, which is no color management, and we don't want to do that. We want to, we are going to be using color management. So go up here to manual settings, and you're going to have two choices, Epson standard, which is sRGB, or Adobe RGB. Now, which of those should you choose? If the, if the file that you're trying to print is already in sRGB mode, choose that. If it's, in our, if it's in the Adobe RGB mode, um, choose that. If it's in a wider color gamut than Adobe RGB, like Profoto RGB, choose the Adobe RGB. The Epson driver will convert from the other, from the other color space to the Adobe RGB. Because this printer is capable of printing pretty close to the Adobe RGB color spectrum. So usually when I work with my pictures, I'm working with them in Adobe RGB because the sRGB color gamut is smaller. It doesn't have the full range of colors that Adobe RGB does. And so if you have a, if you, a lot of digital cameras by default will give you an sRGB file. And if you can set your camera to give you an Adobe RGB file, or if you're working with RAW files, you know, export them as Adobe RGB or a Profoto RGB, which is an even wider color gamut, you'll get a bit broader range of colors possible on your prints. So you'll choose this based on which, what, what your um, image is already in. If it's an sRGB image, choose that. If it's an Adobe RGB, choose that. If it's something that's a wider color gamut like Profoto, choose the Adobe RGB. Now once you've chosen that, and I'm going to choose Adobe RGB because that's what this file is in, choose your resolution. You can choose either 1440 DPI or 2880 for this particular printer. Um, I found in actual experience that you can't tell the difference, at least with my Epson P800, really between 1440 and 2880 unless you look at the print through a magnifier. Choosing the 2880 in theory gives you finer detail. Um, but it also greatly increases the printing times and it uses more ink. So, you know, it's it's up to you. Some some people think they can see the difference. Some people don't. Um, for prints that I've for prints that I sell or that I'm going to exhibit, I often will go ahead and print them in the 2880 mode. But for stuff, something that's that's uh, a proof print or whatever, I'll use the 1440. Even though I really don't think there's a great deal of difference between the two. Um, so I'll go ahead and leave it at that. Um, make sure finest detail is checked. And then once we've gone through these things, then there's another setting we need to look at, and that's in the ad advanced color settings. Click on this. Um, if you're in the Windows driver, there's a button that says advanced that you click on that will bring this stuff up. Once again, you're going to see the color mode here, and you can you can change that if you need to here or in the basic setting. Um, now the other thing we see here is gamma, and there's two choices, 2.2 or 1.8. The default is 2.2. The difference is that if you choose gamma 1.8, the prints are going to be lighter than you would get with a gamma 2.2. Gamma is a technical um, term for 
basically how the how the midtones are rendered. The lower the gamma number, the bright, the lighter the midtones will be. Now the default is gamma 2.2, and the reason for that is that modern monitors are calibrated to a gamma of 2.2 themselves. And so in theory, if you have a gamma 2.2 monitor, which all monitors are, and you print the print using gamma 2.2 setting, they should match. In reality, I found that the prints that come out printed using the gamma 2.2 setting are a little bit too dark. And that's the issue we have when we're doing when we're doing prints using the profiles and the soft proofing and such that I showed in my earlier video. The purpose of the soft proofing is to lighten up the the print to compensate for the fact that they come out a little bit darker than what you see on the screen. I found that if I choose the gamma 1.8 setting when we're doing the printer color management printing, that lightens it up enough that it basically compensates without um, it compensates for that darkening and you get a print that matches the screen perfectly without having to do any soft proofing and that's the real magic of doing the printer color management is that you're eliminating eliminating having to do the soft proofing because as I said the soft proof in theory it sounds really neat you'd see on the screen exactly what you're going to see in the print and you'll be able to pre-visualize that darkening that happens in reality I found it's not really very accurate and so using the printer color management uh, and using the gamma 1.8 setting, it lightens it up just uh, just enough that it actually matches. And I've done a lot of prints this way. They match my monitor perfectly without doing any soft proofing, without doing any compensating in Photoshop by lightening the picture myself in Photoshop. And so this is what I recommend you use. Now, you, your results may be different than mine. If you're using a different printer model or if you're using, um, if your monitor is calibrated different than mine or using a different monitor, things may be different. My monitor is an, is an NEC SpectraView monitor, which is a self-calibrating monitor designed for graphics work. It's accurate. It's one of the best you can get. But, you know, your mileage may vary. So my advice, you know, the first time you do this, try a, try a couple of test prints at both settings. Try some at 1.8, so try some at gamma 2.2. See which ones match the monitor better. I'm pretty confident that you're going to like the 1.8 setting better, but you may not. So it's up to you. Um, once you've got all these things set, now I don't mess with any of these other controls. I don't find that these are really necessary. Um, if you have a good calibrated monitor, the color settings should not be needed. To, you shouldn't need to change those because the color should match pretty closely in the print to what you got on your screen. So hit save and then hit print. And I'm going to go ahead and just hit done here because I've already done these prints. Another advantage to doing the printer color management versus using profiles and soft proofing and such is that a lot of a lot of uh, ICC profiles provided by paper manufacturers and even those provided by the printer manufacturers like Epson for their own products are not very accurate. And the big weakness I found with a lot of them is that they the rendering of of highly saturated blues is very poor with many profiles. Um, this is an example here of this um, file that we were looking at. This is the original over here to the left. Um, this is how it looked printed on um, on Epson's legacy paper with um, printer color management. And this is with it printed using the profile that Epson provided. Um, the weakness that we see is in these saturated blues, like these colors right here or up here. Now, if we look at the original, these are, these are good regular um, pure blue tones. If we look at the uh, printer color management version, they're darker and they're less saturated because printers like this are just not capable of, of reproducing these very saturated blues. We see the same thing happening here with the greens. They've really dulled down quite a bit. Um, the reds have to some extent as well. Um, these very, very highly saturated colors are very difficult for inkjet printers to, to reproduce. And so you're going to see any super saturated colors are going to be dulled to some extent. But we can see here that these blues, even though they've dulled down, they're still basically blue. If we look at the one printed using Epson's profile for this paper, these aren't blue anymore. These are purple, and it looks terrible. And if you've ever tried to print a picture with a, blue, with a deep blue sky and ended up tearing your hair out trying to figure out why the thing looks purple, and this is a really common problem. I've seen this with not just this profile for this particular paper, but also the the profile that Ilford provides for 
for their smooth gloss paper and their gold fiber silk paper, both those profiles do the same thing. They shift the blues toward purple. Um, we can see that here in, in these blue squares, and we can see it up here also in this part of the color spectrum. The uh, blues are, are shifted to purple, and there's very few um, blue tones that will actually reproduce as blue. And this is horrible if you're doing landscape pictures of blue skies or anything else where you've got saturated blue tones that you need to reproduce as a blue. Um, it's tolerable that they're reproduced to here as a blue that's not quite as saturated, and it's unfortunate we can't get the full deep blues that we might like, but at least they're still blue. And this is done using the printer color management using the Epson driver. And it's strange that Epson could get proper color using the color management built into the driver, and yet the profiles they provide for that same paper and that same printer and that same ink set are not accurate, but that's the way it is. And as I said, I've, I've seen this issue with, with the blues shifting to purple with, with uh, profiles for Epson papers, with profiles for Ilford papers. Um, I've seen it for a couple other papers I've used in the past. It seems to be, a, it seems to be something that, for some reason, the color profiling software that produces these profiles just has a hard time with. And part of it is that the inkjet printers themselves just have a hard time reproducing saturated blues, but even so, it seems to me that if the printer's driver can do it right, then certainly somebody could produce a profile that can. And a lot of them, just, they just don't. And so by using the printer color management, not only are we getting a system that's a lot simpler and a lot easier, you know, no soft proofing, no worrying about rendering intents. And if you don't understand what those things are, go watch the other video. I'll put a link to it in the description for this one if you want to take a look at how complex this can be. Um, but by using the printer color management um, technique that I've shown you here, you're avoiding all those all those complex hassles. You get the print that comes out of the printer and it's going to be correct as far as the brightness of the print, and it's going to have a little bit more accurate color reproduction, at least with the paper and the printer and the inks that I'm using. And I think that with a lot of other I've seen this with other inkjet printers too, not just the model I'm using, so you may find a similar benefit. Um, so give it a try and see if it works for you with the paper and the inks and the printer that you've got. You may find that this is a much better solution for you than doing the traditional printing using the profiles. And I've certainly found that with the papers and inks, or the papers that I'm using with the Epson ink and the Epson P800 printer, I'm actually preferring this method over my earlier way of doing things.